Well, that's why I won't go into the new museum in the riverfront. The old museum, you know, we had back back when you was a kid and I was working at them on, you know, when I was off, I'd work at them and I, what it was, I was telling about frontier stuff. Well, we got one guy in there. He went to, he went to Peace Corps. That's where you went to India and never had to go to war. And he was in that. And so he's anti-gun. He's the one that had a big world to do. That new museum we got, they won't. Sh they will not show any gun from a gun collection in that museum after he got done talking with them. And I said something to guys. I said, "Why don't you get the NRA? They're bigger than we. The rest of us go in there and jump on their ass." Yeah, there was a guy from out east or something had a fantastic collection of antique guns and weapons, and he wanted to show it. And as soon as he heard about this one asshole, why well, he went into the boss and got all the people around there to listen to him. They done what he said, and somebody said something to me every day. You ever been in the new museum? Nope, and I never will be. Well, what's the matter? I says, when it's an a gun in this country right here, I ain't going in it. I don't give a shit what they got in it. They ain't going to have guns. I know, but I'm still not going in to see anything else. I don't give a damn if they got $60 million worth of diamonds on the table to look at. I won't walk in and look at them. I said, I ain't going to go in there and... I said, now, if the NRA can get enough guys together and change their mind and let them bring all he wanted to do, he had a beautiful collection. And everybody that owned guns had heard about him, and they wanted to see it. Well, when he asked them in there, they said, no, that asshole, he heard about it first, and he jumped all over him. <clears throat> yeah, he went to India just as a, before the war started to get away. <clears throat> and they call it the Liberty something. It was all same type of people getting away from not being drafted. And he was big in it there in India. And that's where I think he met his wife because she always used to try to do some of them Indian dra dances. And she was more the damn at it. But anyway, and he had three girls for that thing. But anyway, he met her down there. She was one that went down there to, was down there for some reason. And, uh, and when, uh, before they closed, why, uh, uh, the older ones, hell, uh, had his, he's the one that done the stars and all that stuff in the museum. That's the guy that's anti-gun. Well, at that time, we had another little room about this big, looked like a cabin inside, and we had a thing on trapping, you know, way back. And uh, he whined about that, but that guy in, he said, no, people like it, you just leave it there. Show them your moon and your stars and leave these guys alone. It was me and some others get over there on Saturday while we'd uh, have people come in and I'd be dressed in buckskins or one of my buddies would be and uh, showed them knives, showed them uh, uh, had a hell of a good collection of arrowheads that belonged to the museum. And we knew where they come from and all that, and we'd explain them. Uh, I went in, uh, you'd go in there, and that'd be one of them, and it might not be me, it'd be somebody else. We'll explain the whole thing to them, and we'd shut the door. So the noise outside didn't bother them. Well, what happened was, uh, there were some jerks that shut the door, 
but they locked it on the inside and then when we unlocked it and said the movie's over and we told them we don't want anybody messing with that lock we handle that well after they was gone i looked around and seen about six or seven of the best arrowheads in that collection were gone some asshole had stuck them in his pocket so after that why uh one of us stayed in there all the time